Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for farmers. Creator of heaven and earth, we praise you. For the goodness of your creation reveals something of you, the source of all goodness. We ask you to bless those who farm and make their living off of the land. They know of their dependence upon you and look to you to make their crops and livestock fertile and fruitful. Bless them, Lord, with strong faith, healthy bodies, generous hearts, and an abundance for good works. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. Do this in memory of me. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, at the urging of, of whose love the martyrs, saints perpetua and felicity, defied their persecutors and overcame the torment of death, grant we ask by their prayers that we may ever grow in your love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole assembly of the children of Israel and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not steal. You shall not lie or speak falsely to one another. You shall not swear falsely by my name, thus profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud or rob your neighbor. You shall not withhold overnight the wages of your day laborer. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not act dishonestly in rendering judgment. Show neither partiality to the weak nor deference to the mighty, but judge your fellow men justly. You shall not go about spreading slander among your kin, nor shall you stand by idly when your neighbor's life is at stake. I am the Lord. You shall not bear hatred for your brother in your heart. Though you may have to reprove him, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against your fellow countrymen. You shall love yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. God. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your Lord, Lord, the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your Lord, Lord, Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your Lord, Dominus Fobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matteum. Gloria 
Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, Whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink, a stranger and you gave me no welcome naked and you gave me no clothing, ill and in prison and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Verbum Domini. During the privileged season of Lent, the memorials of saints, if they are observed, it's optional, they are observed as commemorations, and we simply have the collect for those saints at the beginning of the Mass as we did today. But today, I wanted to say a word about our saints, these uh, saints that have been honored since ancient times. They are mentioned in the ancient Roman canon, which we'll be using today for our Eucharistic prayer. St. Augustine, already in the 400s, was familiar with a document about their sufferings, our saints Perpetua and Felicity. And there's a document, they were martyred in 203, 203 in Carthage in North Africa. And there's this document, an ancient document, The Passion of the Martyrs, Perpetua and Felicity. And much of it is attributed to the writing of Perpetua. And she tells us in this document, some have in fact referred to it as the diary of Perpetua. You can easily find it on the internet. And she tells us in this document that she was 22 years old. She was nursing a baby. Felicity likewise was pregnant, eight months pregnant. She actually gave birth in the prison. They were catechumens. Perpetua was a catechumen together with one of her brothers, one of her two brothers. And her father, who loved her dearly, said, I loved you more than all the other children, he begged her not to go forward with her baptism. 
But Perpetua said, Father, you see this little picture here. Can we call it by any other name? He said, no. He said, neither can I be called anything other than a Christian. That's who she was. She had come to know the Lord. And it was a few days later that she received baptism and then she was taken as a prisoner and Felicity as well and thrown into a dark dungeon. And her brother said to her, she, he asked her to pray that the Lord would reveal whether this was going to result, her imprisonment was going to result in her passion or her escape. And Augustine refers to this in a homily that he gave on their feast day. And Perpetua has a vision in which she sees this horrible dragon at the bottom of this ladder that goes up into heaven. And so people are afraid to approach that ladder. Of course, that ladder is the way to eternal life, to heaven, embracing the Christian faith, following Christ. People are afraid because of that dragon. But in that vision, Perpetua sees herself stepping on his head and climbing up that ladder. And when she gets up to heaven, she sees the good shepherd. And around him at his feet are his sheep who are beloved by him. And he has pails of milk, which are their works of charity that they have done in this life. So the saints understood, and we see this very clearly in this account, they understood the hope that was theirs of eternal life. And they would not be turned away from that. I don't know if you had the opportunity to see that, that film, To Believe, on EWTN. It's available free on demand. You can easily find it on our website, on your app. To Believe, now the Friars watched it Saturday evening. It's a one-hour film. A true story about a, a pastor, I think his name was Father Sebastian, and his, his people about 100 years ago in Ukraine and the persecution that they suffered, horrible. It's difficult to watch. But the title of it is To Believe. And many times people are asked to renounce their Christian faith. And I won't spoil it, but at the end there's just this dramatic scene that shows the cost of belief and what it cost for the faith to be handed on to us. Powerful. Today we can ask for Saints Perpetua and Felicity to intercede for us, that we will have similar courage. That we will not lose sight of that, that home that is ours in heaven. And Augustine, as he is quoting this document about the passion of Perpetua and Felicity, he says, all around, Perpetua said, a shepherd both young and old in the prime of life, his hair all white, never knowing old age. His features were bright with youth because he is the same and his years will never fail. All around him, sheep were lying and resting. He was talking to them in comforting fatherly tones telling them about the heavenly promises prepared for them and saying, come, blessed of my father, take possession of the kingdom which has been prepared for you from the origin of the world. And he shows them pills, pails of milk frothing with pure hearts through splendid acts of charity. So this is what we are called to during this season of Lent, and today's readings remind us of that. Today's first reading for the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, this is in a section called the Holiness Code by many scholars. So from chapter 17 to the end of Leviticus, there is, I think, some 85 times mentioned the word kadosh, 
holy. And so today's reading, be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And this holiness code speaks about holiness regarding the liturgy, regarding sexuality, and regarding how we are to treat others. Well, we know that the liturgy now has been fulfilled by Christ in this new and everlasting covenant that we're celebrating here. This is a means for our growing in holiness. The moral code, similarly, that is our path for holiness. And then today's reading is about how we are treating others. We're not to be mistreating them. We're not to be taking advantages of them. Do not steal, do not lie, do not swear falsely, do not defraud or rob, do not withhold wages, do not act dishonestly in rendering judgment, judge justly, do not go about spreading slander, do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is at stake. You know, recently I was speaking with one of our employees who had a remarkable experience when he was working at a gas station. And he was talking about, he was speaking with a policeman that he had come to know who was getting some advice on plumbing. And this drunk driver comes into the gas station, hits the police car, pushes it into the gas pumps and everything bursts into flames. And he immediately runs away. He told me I could relate this story. But then he feels impelled to go back, open that door, it was hard to open for that policeman, pull him out, rescue him. And he was given an award and he said that that policeman thanks him every year. And he said to him, it wasn't me, I just felt impelled impelled to go and to help at that moment. That's a remarkable story, but it's also something that can move us too, to be impelled by the spirit, by the works of charity, the needs that we see in particular before us that we can in some way alleviate that suffering, that we can help that need of our particular neighbor and the Lord points out how important that is. And that we look with eyes that look differently. That we're looking with a supernatural sense of things, not just the natural sense of things, but the supernatural sense of things that Perpetua and Felicity could see. And so I'm seeing Jesus here in this particular need. I'm encountering Jesus here. There's a wonderful group of Franciscans that came from Brazil who work downtown among the homeless in Birmingham. Some of our employees go there, some of you here, to make sandwiches, to bring them to the homeless, to do what they can to alleviate the needs. St. Stephen's, there's a deacon there who works at the firehouse shelter. And it's trying to help these, anyone, these people in need to get up back on their feet, to help them again. That's what the Christian spirit motivates us to do. That we're, see, we're not gonna do something offensive to our neighbors as Leviticus concludes, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We're not gonna misuse our neighbors, but rather we're gonna be an instrument as the Lord wants to use us for charity toward our neighbors. So one of the pillars of the Lenten season of our observance is almsgiving. So let us think about that today. What are ways that we can help the needy in body and in spirit? We are believers in a great chain of believers. The faith has been handed on to us and sometimes at tremendous cost. Let us never forget that. And may the saints we celebrate today, Felicity and Perpetua, the martyrs of Ukraine, so many of them, who suffered, may they intercede for us that we may have courage in our own day
and let us live that gospel life of charity so that we too may hear those words one day. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. With humble and contrite hearts, let us now ask the Father for our needs and intentions. <clears throat> that the church may reflect the creative power, wisdom, and love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as she proclaims the good news of salvation to the ends of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our Holy Father lead the people of God in the way of holiness and virtue. We pray to the Lord. For the Franciscan missionaries of the eternal word, that their lives may be founded on the Holy Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died without time to prepare, that the Lord will embrace them in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for the Lord's mercy for a swift end to the conflict in Ukraine, for angelic help and protection for those who are in danger, and for the intercession of saints, perpetua and felicity. We pray to the Lord. Lord Eternal Father, through this season of Lent, touch and heal our hearts that we may more generously respond to your invitation to conversion and holiness through Christ our Lord.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. May this devout oblation be acceptable to you, O Lord, that by your power it may sanctify our manner of life and gain for us your conciliation and pardon through Christ our Lord. Dominus Fabiscum. Gratus Domino It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially the people of Ukraine. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service out of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. For, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace, especially those in Ukraine. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, 
Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Precepti salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater Quasimus Domine ab omnibus malis, and a propitius pacem in dihibus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tu iadiuti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Domine Jesu Christe, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam do vobis, nede spicias peccata nostra sed fidem ecclesiae tuae, Eam quae secundum voluntatem tuam pace vicari eco adonare dignadis, qui vit et regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brethren, you did it for me, says the Lord. Come, you blessed of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. O Jesus, since I cannot now receive thee under the sacramental veil, I beseech thee with a heart full of love and longing to come spiritually into my soul through the immaculate heart of thy most holy mother and abide with me forever, thee in me and I in thee, in time and in eternity, in Mary. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that in receiving your sacrament, we may experience help in mind and body, so that kept safe in both, we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Fobiscum. Bow down for the blessing. Enlighten the minds of your people, Lord, we pray with the light of your glory, that they may see what must be done and have the strength to do what is right. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Benedictio Patris Omnipotentis, Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, descendat super vos et maniat semper. Prayer for vocations. God, God our Father, who wills that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of your truth, we beg you to send laborers into your harvest and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness, so that your word may spread and be glorified, and all nations may know you, the only God, and him whom you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Our Lady, Queen of the Americas, Mary, Mother of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, pray for us. <laughs> 